Hi, my dear friends and my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. Hope you all are fine by the grace of God. Welcome back. Let's continue our meditation with the help of the Holy Spirit. Now the Holy Spirit has graciously given us the topic, Wrath of Love. In that, He has given us the subtopic, Die Now or Be Dying Forever. This will be part 2, section 2. Now in part 2, section 1, the Holy Spirit has graciously uh, told us many things. They are like, uh, you know, uh, like uh, we have lost the first love, meaning the love we had for God, slowly and steadily, uh, the kingdom of darkness and the masquerading ministers have taken it out uh, by infiltrating the lies and they have stolen the truth and so on. In that way, they have made us to divert the love we had for God and they have made us to love ourselves. God forbid. Unfortunately, that is the pathetic situation. Right? It's all in detail in uh, part 2, section 1. Please uh, go to the channel Grace Fresh Food Ministries and with the help of the Holy Spirit, watch that uh, those messages and be blessed. So, for continuity's sake, quickly we see the summary of what has been given in the previous messages. First one, the Holy Spirit grievously told us that uh, from Revelation chapter 2 verse 4, Nevertheless, I have somewhat against you because you have left your first love. That's the first thing the Holy Spirit told us. And from Luke chapter 11, so, regarding, okay, what can we do? What can we do to repent and to come back to our, uh, you know, the original uh, state, the spiritual uh, life that we enjoyed when we were first saved and all that. Now, from being a sheep, they have changed us into goats. And how to be transformed back to sheep from being goats? For that, the Holy Spirit told the first thing we should do is to ask for the Holy Spirit. That's why from Luke chapter 11 verses 9 and 13, the Holy Spirit told us, And I say unto you, Ask and it shall be given you. Seek ye shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. And verse 13, If you then being evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more? Shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask Him? Let me have some water, please. Now, my dear brothers and sisters, the Holy Spirit is a promise for everybody. Whoever is thirsty, the living water, the Holy Spirit will be poured into you. Amen. Hallelujah. That's a promise of our loving Father God. So, please do not misunderstand and think that the Holy Spirit Baptism of the Holy Spirit and all that is only for some particular people or something like that. No, no, no. It's not like that. He loves all of us and He gives the promise of the Holy Spirit. It's a free gift to anyone who asks. And of course, we should ask with thirst and longingness and all that. Okay. Then, then the next point the Holy Spirit told us is that when the Holy Spirit comes into us, He is the one who pours the love of uh, our Father God into our hearts that's from romans chapter 5 verse 5 it goes like that and hope makes not ashamed because the love of god is shed abroad in our hearts by the holy ghost which is given unto us amen hallelujah then with that love of god the agape love of god we will have the by god's grace the power uh, to you know, deny ourselves and take up our own cross and follow our loving Lord and Savior Jesus Christ daily. The word daily is important. That's from Luke chapter 9 verse 23. It says like that. And he said to them all, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. This is Jesus talking to whoever wants to follow him. And only when we follow our, our one and only God, more precisely speaking, the soul of God, the Lord and Savior of this whole world, Jesus Christ. Only when we follow Him, we will end up in, uh, uh, you know, the kingdom of God. Because, the, you know, Jesus Christ, He is the perfect example. When He lived in this world, for us He came, uh, you know, God manifested in flesh and he was taken up and he seated at the right hand of our loving Father God. So, in the same way, only when we follow Him, because He is the way, He is the only way, there are no any other ways. That's the life from the pit of hell. 
Oh, so many ways, but only one God. No, they are preparing us for devil worship. Please do not believe that, my dear brothers and sisters. We have to be very vigilant. Shortly, uh, I think in the future messages, shortly we will see about the spiritual battle and all the what is this spiritual battle, the devil worship and all kinds of things they are trying to deceive us and get us into devil worship. Let me ask a water, please. So, Jesus is the one and only way. He is the one and only God. More precisely speaking, He is the soul of God. In the previous messages about the Trinity and all that the Holy Spirit has graciously given us, please watch those messages in Grace Fresh Foods Ministries, the channel name. So, from Luke chapter 9 verse 23, it says, And he said to them all, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. So, till this, we have seen in the previous message. And uh, please watch the Lost Spirit, Jesus and the Gospel, part 1, section 3, uh, for true baptism. It is talking from Romans chapter 6 verse 1 to 7. That's the true meaning of baptism is in that uh, message the lost spirit jesus and the gospel part one section three it's a previous uh, playlist the playlist uh, title is apostles of apostasy so now uh, you know with grievance the holy holy spirit revealed to us that in the christian environment they have infiltrated with counterfeit spirit counterfeit jesus and counterfeit gospel that's why you know that that spirit is an is an unconvicting spirit, and they have presented to us a Christ without cross, and that Jesus, that so-called Jesus Christ, is a forgiver of deliberate sins. He will not help us to deliver from sin and all that, because that is not Jesus Christ. That is the Antichrist, the spirit of Antichrist working, right? And false prophets and all that. Then the gospel is prosperity gospel. It's it's uh, you know always about worldly blessing and all that and it is full the gospel is full of super grace hyper grace and as if you know god has given us the grace uh, that has to, uh, to be used as a ticket to continue in our sin and all that so this is the pathetic situation of the christian environment not all but majority that's what the uh, you know the holy spirit graciously revealed to us now that's why we do not have deliverance from sin. That's why the church is so weak. That's why the church is not powerful like the early churches. How they were. You see, why? There is no partiality in God. God loves all of us in the same way. Then how come our churches are so weak? That the reason is there is no true repentance. There is no true deliverance. There is no deliverance from sin. That's the most important thing because sin is the one which separates us from God. Sin is the one, oh God forbid, if we don't repent, will take us into eternal fire. The problem is sin. True Christianity, true salvation, true repentance, everything will change a sinner into saint. That is the meaning of salvation, not this kind of counterfeit things. Please do not be deceived. Do not allow them to fool you anymore, my dear brothers and sisters. Ask for the Holy Spirit. He is the Spirit of Truth. And He will expose these kind of masquerading ministers of the devil. Those are the apostles of apostasy. Let me ask some water, please. So, now that... That they have successfully, you know, the kingdom of darkness, the beast system of this world, the masquerading ministers of the devil, the apostles of apostasy have su uh, successfully kept us in this kind of lukewarm Christianity and names of Christianity. Instead of us being sheep, they have made us into goats, goats with selfishness. There is no love for God. There is no reverential fear and all that. Now that by God's grace, when you get this truth, they are exposed and when the Holy Spirit touch our hearts, you know, when we give, um, submit ourselves and give in to the, uh, uh, the loving warnings of the Holy Spirit. Because in Revelation chapter 3 verse 19, he says, As many as I love, I rebuke and chest and therefore be zealous and repent. Right? Out of love only he is telling that. So, by God's grace, when we are touched by his love and then we repent and truly repent and we give in, 
and we get ready to be uh, to get into the true baptism and to be delivered from sin and all that to have the true salvation which will turn a sinner into saint then of course the kingdom of darkness is not going to keep quiet they are going to fight against us right so the kingdom of darkness is the devil the evil spirit the masquerading ministers of the devil the apostles of apostasy and so on the beast system of this world and all that so we this is a spiritual battle we have to fight back if you want to safeguard your uh, salvation you have to fight back my my dear brothers and sisters this is a spiritual battle we will see in the future messages in detail about spiritual battle and for the time being just get it it is a spiritual battle even as you are listening now there are a lot of uh, in the, you know uh, diversion and in uh, the disturbances telling you to go to some other interesting and very um, entertaining videos and all that that is the fight the spiritual battle they do not want you to come to the truth because it will expose you that's why the devil evil spirit will try to divert you from these messages this kind of by god's grace this kind of true messages that will expose the works of the devil so we need strength power to fight this spiritual battle we need through grace we need the light we need the revelation we need the power in the spirit and we need the strength in the body to fight this spiritual battle like zealous soldiers of jesus christ amen hallelujah for that only from james chapter 4 please turn your bible to james chapter 4 we will do verse 6 and 7 for, for that the Holy Spirit is telling us we need the grace because all have sinned and fallen short of the glory and the wages of sin is death. So we do not deserve to receive anything from God except the eternal fire. But by His mercy, by His mercy, when we accept His love, then we are saved. Let me have some water please. So, excuse me. James chapter 4 verse 6 and 7. That's why we have to humble ourselves to get the grace. Only through grace we can get anything and everything from God. We have to humble ourselves. So James chapter 4 verse 6 and 7. But he gives more grace. Wherefore he says, God resists the proud but gives grace to the humble. Submit yourself therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Amen. Hallelujah. There is no other way to safeguard your salvation. There is no other way to escape from this kingdom of darkness except to resist. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. And you cannot resist him. We cannot resist him with our own power and all that. We have no power. But with the help of the Holy Spirit, we can resist him. And we can overcome sin. We can overcome temptation. We can overcome all, all the cunning ways of the, you know, the kingdom of darkness, the lies, the deception, the bewitchment, everything by God's grace in the, the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we can overcome. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, but he gives more grace. Wherefore says God, uh, sorry, wherefore he said, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. So, the problem here is pride. Please, this day when the word of God is coming to you, do not harden your heart with I and pride, my dear brothers and sisters. I am pleading with you like a fellow brother out of love. Humbly I am asking you, please do not harden your heart with I and pride. Because of pride only, Lucifer became devil and now look at what is going on all. So much of pain because of pride. So, do not allow yourself to continue in that pride. That's how they made us to be in, into goats, to love ourselves with I, the lovers of I, pride and all that. That seven points in the previous messages, the Holy Spirit gave us that from 2 Timothy chapter 3, you know, lovers of self and lovers of pride, God forbid, and all that. So, give up this pride. Humble yourself. God is so loving. He is so merciful. He is so gracious. Oh, his love is unconditional and therefore unlimited agape love. Accept. Humble yourself. Accept the love of God. When the Holy Spirit is coming and you know talking to you through these messages. Revelation chapter 3 verse 20 it says. Behold I stand outside and knock. And if anyone hears my voice and opens for me. I will come in and dine with him and he with me. 
this is talking the door is talking about the door of your heart right so you open up and according to uh, i mean from roman chapter 5 verse 5 the holy spirit pours the love of god into you amen hallelujah so god resists the proud so please give up the pride but gives grace to the humble so humble yourself get the grace only through grace you will get the revelation you know the light the revelation the power in the spirit and the strength in the body to resist that's what verse 7 is telling submit yourself therefore to god we have to humble and submit you know to the the loving conviction of the holy spirit and resist the devil and he will flee from you all right by god's grace now the devil is gone please turn your bibles to john chapter 3 now we will talk about the true baptism let me have some water please john chapter 3 verse 3 and 5 This is talking about the importance of true baptism. The true baptism will deliver you. It will, you know, crucify the sinful nature of all men. That's what. How important is that? If you want to go into the kingdom of God by His grace, we need the true baptism. Without true baptism, we cannot enter the kingdom of God. That's why Jesus is telling to Nicodemus in John, the Gospel of John, chapter three, verses three and five. Jesus answered and said unto him, "Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God." When Jesus said, "Verily, verily," that means he's telling something very important. He says, "Assuredly, verily, verily," and all that. That means he's most assuredly he will say. That means he is trying to say something very important, very essential for our salvation, very essential for us to be, you know, delivered uh, from the eternal fire, going towards the eternal fire, being delivered from going towards the eternal fire, and walking in our life every day towards the eternal life by the grace of God. So Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. so we have to be born again what is the meaning of born again being born in the spirit in verse 5 he is telling jesus answered verily verily again he is telling verily verily i say unto you except a man be born of water and the spirit he cannot enter into the kingdom of god so that is talking about the baptism at the same time it is talking about the holy spirit coming into us and giving life to our dead spirit thereby the spirit becomes alive that's the meaning of being born again amen hallelujah so You know what happens in the baptism, as we and please sprinkling and all that is it is not biblical at all. It is a deception of the devil. Sprinkling uh, with water is not baptism at all. Baptism means we should first of all know get the revelation what baptism is. What does the baby or a child knows about baptism? Baptism means the sinful nature. All man should die, and the you know the new man. the holy nature a uh, new man should be born and born again that's it that is baptism so it's not sprinkling so what is true baptism as we go under the water the sinful nature all man is buried in faith through uh, sorry through faith in spirit and when you come out the new creation right anyone who is born of <laughs> born of god is a new creation amen so the new man the holy nature you know the righteous man the new man the the spirit is born that's the meaning of true baptism okay so please turn to roman chapter 6 verses 1 to 7 we'll see quickly see about the true baptism roman chapter 6 verses 1 to 7 what shall we say then shall we continue in sin that grace may abound because in roman chapter 5 verse 20 it says Where sin abounds, grace abounds all the more. So, my dear brothers and sisters, please do not worry about. Oh, I am in this sin, I am in that sin, and uh, it's very hard to give up uh, this sin and all those things. It's a lie from the pit of hell. I was a very filthy sinner before I was saved. By by God's grace and mercy and love, I am delivered. I am saved by God's grace. Amen. Hallelujah. All praise to God. he save me if he can deliver me surely he can deliver you also right let me have some water please that's the meaning of the word 
Romans chapter 5 verse 20 when he says, when sin abounds, grace abounds all the more. Why? Because he loves us so much. He doesn't want anybody to perish in the eternal fire. So he wants to increase his grace to save us from his wrath and eternal fire and all that. And he wants to take us into eternal, you know, the kingdom of God. And there will be full of joy and peace and love and life and many things. <laughs> right? Please don't miss that, my dear brothers and sisters. It's not worth at all. It's not worth. This evil deceptive pleasures of sin is not worth at all. Compared to eternity, what we are going to enjoy in the kingdom of God. Amen. Hallelujah. So, when sin abounds, grace abounds all the more. So, that is uh, that is because God wants to deliver us from sin. But if these people, they will misinterpret and they will, um, you know, they will uh, tell the lie and deceive us into thinking that, oh, grace is given so that you can continue in sin and something like that. They will never be bothered about uh, delivering us from sin. In fact, they do not want us to be delivered from sin because these are the masquerading ministers of the devil. They are working for the devil. The devil and the kingdom of darkness, they want to pull as many as possible, as many people as possible with the lie. They want to deceive and pull them into eternal fire with them. That is their sole aim. Please don't forget that. Then that's why when it continues, Romans chapter 6 verse 1. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? That's why that question is there. And verse 2 it says, God forbid. No. We cannot continue in sin. That's why the question is here. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? How can we who are dead to sin live any longer therein? That's why the subtopic graciously the Holy Spirit gave us is be uh, sorry, die now or be dying forever. Die now or be dying forever. The, what is the meaning? He still you you have to die. You have to be dead to sin. Oh, God forbid, if you don't repent and you continue in the sin, then once the grace period is over, you will be thrown into eternal fire. We have seen in the previous messages how horrible and terrible the eternal fire is. There is no mercy killing. You cannot die. It will be forever and ever. Oh, God forbid. Please, please, this is not to scare anybody, but the truth is truth, my dear brothers and sisters. So how, God forbid, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Verse 3. Know ye not? That so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. You see, baptism means burying the old sinful nature, old man, and he has to be crucified in, you know, in faith. Then verse 4. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead, by the glory of the Father, even so we should, we also should walk in newness of life. Amen. Hallelujah. You see, on the third day after Jesus was crucified, on the third day, the, uh, the verse says, by the power of the Holy Spirit, I, I believe it's in Romans ch chapter 1, by the power of the Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ was raised back. He was resurrected to, uh, from death. So here it says, in the same way, therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. In the same way, our dead spirit is now, the spirit has come, come to alive because when we come out of the water, the Holy Spirit comes into us and gives life to our dead spirit. Because of sin, uh, when we are born, we are born uh, with a dead spirit. Let me have some water, please. Then verse 5. So we do not forget, my dear brothers and sisters, we are a new creation. Once we have taken uh, the true baptism by water, baptism by immersion, we are a new creation. The old things have passed away. They are all dead. You cannot continue in sin. That's why in the verse 2, Romans chapter 6, the question is asking, We, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? That means, how can we continue in sin? That doesn't make sense. That's a lie and deception because they want to 
uh, you know, take us into eternal fire with them. That's why the kingdom of darkness lied to us. Only the truth can set us free. That's why we need the word of God very badly and we need the Holy Spirit who is the spirit of truth who will give us the correct interpretation. These people will give, deceive us. Please be careful. And verse 5. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall all we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Amen. Hallelujah. Verse 6. Knowing this, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. See the importance there. Verse 6. Yeah? Know this, that our old man is crucified with him. We have to be crucified when we go under the water in baptism. That the body of sin might be destroyed. Why we have to be crucified? Because this the, that old body is a body of sin. The body of sin should be destroyed. It should be crucified. All the sinful nature, all man should be crucified in the cross when we, you know, go under the water. That's why in Luke chapter 9 verse 23, Jesus told that if anyone wish to follow me, you have to deny yourself and take up your own cross and follow me daily. So, this baptism, group, it is, of course, I mean, uh, uh, physically speaking, you, we take baptism one day. But that process is in the spirit. That process is happening every day. It has to happen daily. Right. So the old man is crucified that the body of sin may be destroyed. That henceforth we should not serve sin. We are dead to sin. We cannot sin, my dear brothers and sisters. We cannot deliberately sin. We cannot continue in sin. Then verse 7, 4 he that is dead is freed from sin. Amen. So to be free from sin, we have the old man, the sinful nature, old man should be dead. By God's grace, I am telling out of experience. Before I took a baptism for the first time and I did not have any revelation about baptism. And even after baptism, I was continuing in my sinful ways. Then by God's grace, the Holy Spirit convicted. Then I see, before I take the baptism, the same the same life. Then after the baptism, also the same life. There is not much difference. Only thing is maybe I may go to church. I may give the tithe, the offering and all those things. These are all simply religious spirits. They are deceiving us. Then the Holy Spirit convicted. Then I also felt like, what is it? There is no change. When I look at, uh, this is not a pinpoint at anybody, but when I compare the worldly people, the, they, they are in sin. And I am also in sin, but I call myself Christian. God forbid. That doesn't make any sense. Then the Holy Spirit convicted me. I humbled myself. I gave in. I gave up the pride, the eye, the lust of the flesh, everything. And I, and I submitted myself to Him. Then I was able to resist the devil by God's grace. And then I took the baptism again. And from that day onwards, keeping God as witness, I am telling you, by God's grace, every day, every day I am being, being cleansed by the word. I am being sanctified by the word. I am being sanctified by the spirit and all that. Let me ask a water, please. That's why, by God's grace, because the experience is there. I cannot keep quiet. I have to share this with as many brothers and sisters as possible to save them the same way how God saved me. See, he snatched me from the brim of eternal fire in the same way everyone should be snatched from the brim of eternal fire. That's why the Holy Spirit urged me and made me to, you know, make these messages. He's talking through me. Please don't look at me. It is not me. Let's continue, please. So, verse 7, For he that is dead, is freed from sin. So if you want to be free from sin, you have to be dead, dead to sin in the baptism. Alright. Now, the love for God will transform us into perfection. You know what will happen after the, this baptism? Then every day as we continue, you know, deny ourselves and take up our own cross and follow Jesus Christ daily. Luke chapter 9 verse 23. What will happen? The works of the flesh will be destroyed. That's what happened to me every day. And the fruit of repentance will start to, uh, you know, to display. You can see that. And the fruits of the spirit will manifest. Then as you grow every day in, your, in, the, in God's love and in spirit, um, what will happen? Is 
the holy spirit will uh, you know bless you with the gifts of the spirit and then as you grow some more then you will be able to do miracles miracles we do only for two purposes one the first one is to help the world see who is uh, the one and only true god jesus christ that is the first purpose second purpose is to glorify our loving father god not to make a name for ourselves right and regarding this Matthew chapter 5 verse 48 it says be therefore perfect even as your father who is in heaven is perfect this is Jesus telling to us he said you have to be perfect you should grow in your spirit in your love to be perfect as your father in heaven is perfect and also we are called to be transformed to be conformed to the image of Jesus Christ that's the uh, that's how we grow in our spiritual life Uh, in the love of god and all that with the help of the holy spirit we need the help uh, help of the holy spirit the holy spirit is a must my dear brothers and sisters without him we cannot do anything the gospel of john chapter 15 verse 5 thank you lord jesus is telling you cannot do anything without me without the holy spirit we cannot do anything my dear brothers and sisters we need him very badly cling to him cling to the holy spirit ask for him and the, our loving father god will give us the holy spirit so This Christianity is not a religion it is a relationship with our loving father god and we as adopted children now that we are born uh, again in the spirit now only because god is spirit so only those who are born in the spirit and become alive in the spirit and continue to be alive in the spirit only they are the children of god and we have to endure to the end that's very important because the enemy will always work against us the devil the kingdom of darkness will work, always work against us and to with the lies and all that to deceive us and snatch away our salvation god forbid let me answer what up so we have to be very 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 alert my dear brothers and sisters spiritually we have to be very alert so this christianity is the relationship loving relationship between our father god and we as adopted children because now by god's grace we are born in the spirit so we as adopted children we have this relationship in this relationship we as the holy spirit pours the love of god into us according to roman chapter 5 verse 5 and then we grow in the love we grow in the spirit you know first we will start to do the do's and don'ts what is said here because it is it is in the word of god then as we grow we will do it because we love god so much that we don't want to hurt him so we will you know do the the word of god will become our life then still as we grow by god's grace we will be transformed into the image you know the likeness and the character of god you know the nature and character and all that with humbleness i am telling this is the true christianity this is the true you know the holy spirit to the true holy spirit the true jesus christ who will deliver you from sin and the true gospel is a sinner being transformed into a saint anything that doesn't deliver you from sin because sin is a problem sin is the one which will take you into eternal fire god bless you all be delivered from sin god bless you all take care we'll continue in the next message thank you